Today is about to be a master class on diet. But before we get started, as you guys can tell, new environment out here today. Not the dungeon anymore. We're in the kitchen. But it doesn't really matter whether we're in the dungeon, the kitchen, time to take off the pump cover. So I'm gonna teach you guys the formula that I use without counting a single calorie using my fitness pal or whatever ridiculous things you guys are using to get in shape because your favorite influencer told you to do it. You get what I'm saying? You don't need to do any of that. I've never counted a calorie and I never will. And that's just because, is it realistic in my older years? If I wanna pull out my fitness pal to tell me, hey, you're allowed to eat this or you're not allowed to eat this. Who, what, what kind of man would I be if I allowed an application to tell me what to do, to get in the way of my destiny as a man. So I'm gonna show you guys the dieting framework that I do. And part of the reason why I'm showing you guys today is because we have a ton of food to pick from. I'm gonna show you guys everything top to bottom. I'm gonna teach you guys how to pair your foods up. I can get even specific when it talks about timing and stuff, but I don't even think that's that important. Because it's step one, step two, step three, step four, but I'll probably end up sharing it with you guys. So what we have to start off so I'm going to show you guys the most important part of every meal, protein. That ain't changing, okay? Let me check the angle on this. Oh, perfect. Sometimes I second guess myself and I should not. We're going to start with this, something you guys are aware of, which is chicken. See that? See that beauty? I don't do the meal prep thing when it comes to individual Tupperwares. I like cooking, my meal prep is cooking in large quantities. So if I ever want something, I just go to the refrigerator and pull out the food that I care to have. You don't have to have all of this, but these are just options on the board for you to utilize. For example, we have cod. I like cod. If you don't like cod, pick a fish of your choosing. This is some of the protein sources that I like to leave. I know what you're thinking. You're really gonna show me another chicken? Absolutely, you see that? Rotisserie chicken from Costco. I was once the chicken guy at Costco, believe it or not. It was actually my first job there. And I can debone a chicken in less than 30 seconds. I know someone's gonna be like, that's technically not deboning. You're just taking it off the bone. Like, dude, please. Anyways, next one. Ground beef. 93.7 is what I like to choose. I was thinking of your question before you even asked it. If you are someone who's looking to cut on the amount of fat that they're having, like you just hold on a little bit of pudge, you're gonna to wanna to go higher on that lean. You wanna go at least 93.7 in my opinion. 90.10, how about that? 90 and above, you're good. If you're someone that wants to bulk and is like, I'm too skinny, what do you think that means? Go lower on the lean and go higher on the fat. Why? Because it's more dense. I don't count calories, I just understand that fattier foods are more dense, right? They pack a punch. Boom, so we have the protein down. I got veggies here just for the culture. Do I actually love veggies? I actually do, believe it or not. Lately, I've been on the veggie game and it's kind of concerning. I'm not happy about it, to be honest, but it is what it is. So, I also have this. Oh, I have another meat source for you guys. And this is something you guys can kind of pull out and wheel out too. This is mjadra, which is a Lebanese dish. You don't have to do it. It's basically lentils with rice. Rice, potatoes, mjadra, if you happen to be Lebanese, can't imagine if you know, you're European, you're probably eating that much mjad that I just can't imagine. By the way, we're gonna throw this on flank steak, throw that into the mix. So the way I like to do it, and I actually wanna pull out one other thing for you guys so you have an idea. Maybe two other things, depends on how I'm feeling. Du, 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 no. Perfect, all right, what else we got? All right, let's pull out some of these. I guess I'll just eat that one later. Anyways, so third up, because veggies are kind of like, they're not, they're not proteins, they're not carbs, they're not fats, right? They're just basically there for micronutrients. That's why they're important. But I got this guy right here. Fats, which are basically whole eggs and avocados, or oil, coconut oil is something I like to use. It ain't here. Coconut oil, same idea. Olive oil, avocado oil, I prefer coconut. I think it's the best for you. I think it's much better for your metabolism, especially if you're playing the game of putting on muscle and losing fat. I would definitely lean in on that. Avocado spray, also fantastic. But question is, is how do you place your meals? Where does the equation come in? This is where the equation is actually very, very simple. 
every single one of your meals is going to be centered by, you guessed it, a protein source. Now what you accompany that protein source with is where the question starts to come into place. I personally opt in, typically, for proteins and carbs or proteins and fats. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have a little bit of carbs if there happens to be fats. It's because it allows your metabolic pathways to become much more efficient. There is a science behind this. I'm not just throwing this out of, you know, out of my ass. I've tested a lot of different types of dieting. I used to go on bulks, I used to go on cuts. I don't bulk and I don't cut. I don't do either. And literally the moment I stopped cutting was miraculously when I just started thinking of it, it as like, you know what, maybe I should get back to the fundamentals of things that actually move the needle. I'm not trying to tell myself you can't eat this, you can't do that, suppress yourself, up your movement. All you're doing is torpedoing your metabolism. You have a satiation system for a reason. When your body says I'm full, drop the damn fork. When it says I'm hungry, you eat. And the difference is, is a lot of it, like when you go to start doing this in the very, very beginning, your metabolism is gonna be out of sorts, especially if you're coming from a calorie counting background, you feel like you've been in a plateau for a while and you're easily putting on fat, you have a metabolism issue. But good news for you, you can manipulate it. And that's exactly what this does. The system sets it up. So after a workout, for example, I am looking to be nourished, right? I put my body through the ringer. I train really, really hard, especially if you guys have been on this page. You guys know how intense I go. So what do I do? It's best to take advantage of that by doing a protein and a carb. So something like chicken and rice is fantastic. Something like fish and potatoes is great. Chicken and potatoes, great. A lean piece of meat, it could be even 95, five ground beef. It's all great. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, it's not complicated. You just want to keep your protein leaner. Like, you don't want to have a ribeye. If you have a ribeye, then you want to accompany that with a fat because the ribeye is already too fatty. So you don't want to do a ribeye in rice. Why? Because then you'd be high on all three macronutrients, which makes your body a lot more difficult to then do what it wants to do with its nutrition. It's about setting your soldiers up. Your, when you eat, think of it like your soldiers. You want your soldiers just to do what they want to do. It's almost like money in the bank. You're paying your guys to do work done for you. That's all you're doing. You're just putting money in the bank. So what I'll do typically with ground beef is I'll pair it with eggs because that goes with proteins and fats. Or I'll do ground beef and avocado. I'll do, well, this is flank, so it's a bit leaner. And that's kind of where it's like, it's, it's not like a say all be all equation. I don't want you to think of it that way. Because typically what I'll do is let's use chicken and rice because that's something I'm sure you guys are accustomed to. I'll do chicken and rice with half an avocado or three eggs on top. There can be overlap, but you want like 80 to 90% of that meal to be coming from the protein and carb. And then you can have a little bit of fat. And if you do it the other way around, it works the exact same way. So if I have, for example, ground beef and eggs or avocado, doesn't really matter what it is, I'll probably have fruit for dessert. That is quite literally the equation. You want to go proteins and carbs or proteins and fats for like 80 to 90% of your plate. And they could be separate meals. It doesn't have to be something that you do like, well, today I have to go protein and carbs. It's just about per meal that you're eating. If you are conscious of these things and you're training the way you're supposed to, you're going to notice that your body is almost going to walk into its own biology. It feels great. You'll notice that you're putting on muscle a lot easier, you're losing fat a lot easier. You'll even notice it on your skin. And it's because you're just setting out, it's quite literally, you're just setting yourself up to be successful when you pair it up this way. So like, here's, a, here's an example. If I have chicken thighs and legs in this rotisserie chicken, I want you to answer this at home and there's no way for me to ensure they have the right answer. But if I were to have chicken thighs and legs, which are the fattier, it's the dark part of the meat, right? Would I wanna accompany that with eggs and avocado? Could I do that? Absolutely. Could I pair that up with that and ground beef and eggs and avocado? Absolutely. That's where it gets a little bit tricky because technically with that, it's not super fatty, but I'd rather you do a chicken breast and rice. Like keep the meat lean and then go carb with it post-workout. If you do it that way, and that's why I always center my carbs typically around training, I don't personally eat before I go to the gym, only when I get back because I dangle the donut. That's the way I like to do it personally. It's my style. But that's where you can find a custom to yours. The reason why I love this framework is because it's so flexible. There are a lot of different animals you can eat from and you are bound to like several. So you can just pick from those and then you start developing those meals. Like my go-to meals 
chicken and rice, chicken and potatoes. Uh, it could be fish and rice. I love fish and rice. Fish and rice is absolutely bomb. I'll probably have that tonight. It could be anything. Maybe a couple eggs on top, boom. If I decide in my head, oh, it's kind of later, like, like right now, for example, I'm gonna do a chicken and rice, or chicken and jadara, technically, because that's, that's what I got. Then later, what I'll do is, I'll go ground beef, eggs, and avocado. I'll go, this steak for sure is gonna be eaten tonight. I'll do that, and then fruit for dessert. It's about pairing it up in a way, and I know this is like gonna be in your head, like, but like, how does this work specifically? The way, for example, like I have clients that I work with. I do it in a way where it's geared towards their personal system. You want to make sure that these are foods you love. This is why I love this framework because is it a little bit annoying on the front end? Of course, but isn't typing calculations into my fitness pal saying you can eat, you're not allowed to eat, you are allowed to eat. It's the same idea, but the difference is, is that annoying lasts for the rest of your life. My annoying lasts about two weeks to three weeks. And I am giving it a lot of leash. Because once you figure it out, then you'll know what meals to lean on. Oh, I love this meal. I love this meal. Then you start developing a roster of meals where it's like, these are my go-tos. And I love them. Because if you don't love them, this doesn't work. I look forward to eating every single time I sit down to eat. I'm not sitting there being like, I have to scarf this down if you're bulking. Or I have to eat this bullshit if I'm cutting. Screw that. You don't have to do that. I am telling you, once you operate under this framework, you become incredibly flexible. I go to family get togethers and guess what I'm looking at? They've got a whole plaster, right? We've all been to a family get together. I'm on a diet. No one needs to know you're on a diet. You look at the entire layout of the meal, right? You look at the entire layout of the table and you can pick the foods you want most and understand instinctually like, okay, I'm going to go protein and carbs on this because I like these meals a little bit more. Or I'm going to go protein and fats on this because I honestly would rather have this right now. It is stupid flexible. And I had to come up with this type of way and really dive into the details because I'm Lebanese. I can't be going up to people's houses saying I'm dieting, I can't eat. It's embarrassing. You know, I'm, I'm not doing that. And even then, it's just not cool. Someone worked really, really hard all night to put out the spread. What am I? Oh, yeah, I'm cutting. I can't. My goals mean too much to me, which they do. But how can I manage to do both where I make this person feel really good about cooking all night, but also get fucking jacked? That's the goal. So anyways... I know this is a little bit all over the place, but you guys can start asking me specifics because now you understand the framework of the diet. And then I can start giving you guys meal examples. I can even sit down and eat with you guys if that's something you prefer. I just didn't think anyone deserves that, but you'll see me scarf down. I mean, I'm, I'm like a fat kid in a candy shop, man. Like I, I absolutely love smashing. So anyways, if there's anything you guys are looking for specifically, you guys know the deal. Drop it down in the comments. And if people like those comments, please give those a thumbs up. And that way I know to make a video on it. As always, guys, and not from the dungeon today, but from the kitchen, I love y'all very much. Uncle Rami out. Peace.